All right, guys, Gerald Swindle, right here with Bass UTV. We just went through a lot of, of the fundamental baits that I have. Now I'm out on the water, just out a little old place, seen a few on the screen, and I'm gonna show you how I would approach this place on the Tennessee River. One thing you have to take in consideration, and I know this is a lot coming at you, is when you get out here on the Tennessee River, you have a lot of this, floating eelgrass. And it's for jet boats and stuff getting here and they shoot fish at night. I don't know where it all comes from, but what that can do is it can dictate how many baits you can throw that you got to burn back in. So if an eelgrass gets in too heavy on a place, it'll change my rotation. But what I always try to do when I pull in on a place like this is I'll first, always, always throw with the current. Why would you not? I see people get up river and throw backwards. Shad don't normally swim that way unless they just, well, you got a few of them, but most of them is gonna swim with the current. So when I idled over this, I spun the boat around, faced it back up river. My target's here. I spot locked down with my oil tracks just sitting here. I'm gonna pick my DT20 up and I'm gonna try to make a few casts in here where they're at. I'm gonna burn the plug through them and see if they'll react. Now, um, to the amount of pressure these fish have seen, is going to determine how many you can catch cranking versus anything else. If you start blasting them right off the get-go, they're fresh out here and nobody's found them yet. If you throw this in here 10, 15 times and you ain't had a bite, and even with the DT-20, one of the things I've learned a lot is with the DT-20 sometimes, I can tell you if they're going to bite it because I can hit them and they won't bite it. If you're throwing a competitor's bait, if you're throwing a big 10XD or something, and it's rattling, sounds like a three-piece band coming, the fish will get out of its way. If the school's pretty heavy, the DT-20 is quiet and subtle. If I'm burning it, a lot of times I'll hit the fish on the back and I'll feel my line go limp. If I do that three or four times and one hadn't actually eat it, I'll swap bait. So one thing I'll be kind of feeling around far as I'm throwing it is can I feel my bait running over them? Summertime fishing, speed kills. Crack got my Uncle Ronnie, but speed kills bass. Old Sal Josie right here, son. Come on. Get on up here now. Get on up here, son. Get on up in here, all right? Come on. <laughs> Woo! Listen, folks, listen. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. This is the James Watson Spoon. This is the Gerald Swindle session of how I fish offshore baits and techniques on Bash UTV. And no, this is not a fish landing violation because I ain't known where I live, baby. This is called get them in the boat. My whole deal when I'm fishing offshore is I have a starting lineup and I work a rotation. I read the elements. I read the current, the wind, the eelgrass. And still, after I sat down with you guys and went over everything I was going to throw, I still had to come out here and pull out a bait that I had not planned on throwing. That tells you every time you, everything you need to know about offshore fishing right then is don't take anything for granted. There's something going on. Just kind of be open-minded about it. I mean, and dude, he hammer clubbed it. And those fish are sitting in exactly 21 foot. Now, the big old bull right there, old big nasty, doesn't got any momentum. There ain't no structure out here. I'm not on no drop. I'm just on the end of a point. A slow, slow tapering point, not a point that you read about in page 39 in the Bassmasters magazine on the tips and tactics on the perfect place to catch deep fish. Oh, God. Oh, I hate you. Sound like Peter T run, running wind sprints. Man, oh, he come off. God. Suck a fat man's foot. Oh, hit it again. I'm sorry you're not having no fun back here, but I'm having a really good time. That spoon, you know, and I don't have a trailer on it. Yeah, you can rig up. You know, we can go through techniques where you put a trailer and stuff on it, make it better. Let's make another cast in there. Something could go down right here. You know, there's guys you can put stinger hooks off the front of them. This is a seven foot four quantum smoke rod, medium heavy. Check the tip out on this. You can still tell it's got the tip. It's not a super stiff rod. You want a little give in it because spoons are bad about losing fish anyway. So if you fish it too stiff, you're gonna miss a bunch of them. It's about the rudest bunch of fish I've ever fished for in my life. So you want that tip. You see I'm just kind of double hopping it. 
right here, Bash, you watch this hand. Here's the key. See this hand? This is the power. I'm pushing down. I'm not jerking with this hand. I'm snapping with my back hand. Right there. See the bait's on the bottom? Push that handle on it. It's just like a pivot. Funk. You can't, you, you'll run out of gas jerking this way. Trust me. Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Subscribe today.